So here we are, David, smoking the number one pledge prequel of 2020. Highest rated, best rated cigar of the year ever, 98 rating. And you're enjoying there the Encore Majestic. I know that's one of your favorites. Mm -hmm. The 2018 cigar of the year, rated 96. Yep. And uh, we must say we're probably one of two that have had, you know, a number one cigar of the year within such a short period of time. You know, one year in between. As far as I know, you are one of two companies that has pulled it off two out of three years, yes. So, uh, you know, more importantly, we are very thankful and very humbled by that. And, um, you know, we're glad that you all are enjoying the cigars and that they were enjoying it also <clears throat> before the rating. Yeah, so that absolutely. So to show that these are, you know, all-time favorites. Mm -hmm. So, David, now that we're here smoking a cigar, uh, that's something where we get those questions a lot. How do you smoke a cigar? Uh, sometimes even people have been smoking for years. I sometimes might ask, oh, this cigar of this size, like the inch, for example, mm -hmm. you know, what, how can I maximize, you know, my enjoyment of a cigar that maybe sometimes I don't usually smoke, mm -hmm. you know, like, like something like a big green gauge like the inch. So David's here uh, to answer some of these questions. Another question a lot of people ask and will also answer uh, during the video is how do you hold the cigar? I know I've been made fun of a couple times here and there, but I've actually, <laughs> you know, held it that way because it's comfortable for me. Right. Uh, so my dad makes jokes sometimes. I think this is the proper way, but sometimes I might be holding it like this. You know, it just all depends on what you're doing, but my dad will make fun of me like, woman, hold that cigar right. Yeah. So, uh, so teach us a little bit, David. What are, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? <laughs> okay. Well, first and foremost, let's talk about how to smoke a cigar. So, you know, and it doesn't matter if you've, just started smoking or if you've been smoking for 30 plus years, you know, there's always a cigar that you're a little bit concerned about because you've either never smoked one before or you've never smoked one that size before. Um, and you brought up the big ring gauge, but basically every principle for how to smoke a cigar applies to whether it's the smallest or the largest. So just to give you a little bit of tidbits and some things to think about, when you start smoking a cigar, the first thing you wanna do is decide how much time do you have? The more time you have, the bigger the cigar, the less time you have, the smaller cigar. And that applies to both length and ring gauge. We discussed length and ring gauge in a prior video about sizes, so you can refer back to that to understand what I mean. When you know what time you have, then the next thing you really have to decide is, what are you desiring? And I'm a big believer about what you desire is kind of what leads you in a lot of things in, in the lifestyle of smoking cigars. So. If you desire something mild because you just want to have a nice cigar, you want something with some good flavor, go find a mild cigar. If you desire a more full-bodied cigar, like our Pledge, which is our most f fullest cigar that we make, then go find that cigar because that's what you're craving at the moment. And just like when you go to a restaurant or you're getting ready to pour yourself a great libation or have a cocktail, there's something you're desiring. You just innately kind of know that. Follow those instincts because that's going to help you enjoy the cigar even more. Once you do that, I highly recommend, and Ernesto, your dad, does the same thing. Take the cigar. Before you even light it, cut it, or do anything to it, take it out of the cello, get it prepared to start going. Both our cigars come with a footband, so you remove the footband like we did before we lit it. You know, and smell the cigar. Enjoy the flavor of the cigar, the aroma of the cigar before it's ever been lit or cut. Once you cut it, take a draw on it. We call that a cold draw in the industry because it's not been lit. Let that flavor hit your palate, your mouth, your lips. Figure out if the wrapper is spicy, if it's got a little bit of sweetness to it. You know, try that. Then you want to light your cigar. Obviously, you've already cut it because we did the cold draw, so then you're going to light it. I toast my foot. A lot of people immediately grab a lighter, like one here, they light it up, and they jab that right into the foot, and they go around like crazy. I tend to like to warm it up first. I like a little bit of smoke coming off because that's the next part. I enjoy the aroma of the cigar as it's lit. Mm -hmm. So you start to smell the smoke and you smell what you're getting ready to put in your mouth and really enjoy. So then you toast it, then you light it. And lighting it, the process of that is really getting the entire foot well lit. Now this plays a key role when you're looking at a larger ring gauge because the larger the ring gauge, the more you gotta toast and the longer it takes to light it because it must be lit all the way across. A little trick, once you think you're lit, turn your cigar towards you, blow on it, and if the whole surface glows red, you're good to go. Then put the cigar in your mouth and enjoy it. 
I want to point out that we do also have a video of how to cut. Mm -hmm. so and how to light. If you guys are interested in that, uh, mm -hmm. please, please uh, check those out. Yeah. So what else, David? Tell us. Um, so now the cigar is lit. Yeah, now the cigar. What do you do there? Now the cigar is lit, and you asked a question, and, and I know there's going to be probably some other questions that come out of all this conversation, but you asked a question of how do you hold a cigar? And yes, your dad does tend to make fun of you about how you like to hold a cigar, but at the end of the day, you answered your own question. How are you most comfortable holding the cigar? The classic way is like this. This is how everybody, they hold it between their, their, their index finger and their middle finger, and they hold the cigar, and that's how they smoke it. However, you can hold it like this, you can hold it like this, you can hold it like this, you can hold it like this. I've seen people hold it like this. I've seen people hold it in their back fingers like this. You know, I know people that have every which way possible to hold a cigar. I know when they even get down further to the cigar, they take a little pick, whether it's a toothpick or a toothpick or a steel pick, and they'll stick it in the cigar so they can smoke the cigar to the point where it burns their lips and it hurts. Personally, if a cigar is that great that it gets to there, once it's hurting my hand and my lips and I can't really hold it with my own you know, hand and, and mouth, I'm done with the cigar. I won't go beyond that. But cigars can get to that point where you can smoke it down to what we call the nub. You know, mm -hmm. It's the very last little bit. But holding the cigar is your personal preference. As a matter of fact, if you go online and you look out there, there is a um, chart somewhere that I saw once about the way you hold the cigar tells about your personality. So... Um, I don't know if it's 100% accurate because I hold it like this and it's not my personality, but it's just interesting to see the different ways that you can actually hold a cigar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually I hold it this way, yeah. which I think it's correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But there are times where, like you said, you might be doing something else, you know, and you're not, you know, yeah. just relaxing and, and holding it the more traditional way. Yeah. And that's okay. So. Uh, and you'd be surprised. You can interchange hands too because. A lot of times, you know, I smoke while we're working mm -hmm. here and all of a sudden I'll have to write something and I switch hands and I write and then I switch back. I'm a righty by nature. But, you know, that's that you can switch hands and hold it different ways. So here's another question. Mm -hmm. I just felt it in my throat. Mm -hmm. Retrohale. I know what my dad says. Retrohale or inhale? Both. Both. Okay. Ooh, I just made a mess. So... That's how you clean up a mess, just in case anybody needs exactly. to Exactly. <laughs> so, inhale is one of the questions that a lot of people say they hear out there. And they're like, oh, I talked to these cigar makers and these guys that have been smoking in the business forever and ever and ever, or been smoking cigars for a long time, and they say they inhale a cigar. The reality is, is that, no, you don't inhale a cigar. You don't want to ever take the cigar into your lungs. That is my personal opinion. Now, I will say there are people out there that do do that. Um, it tends to be a more mild cigar they're smoking, so they can do that like you would inhale a cigarette, which I don't agree with, but you know, there are some people that do that. However, the real question a lot of people ask is retro. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for clarifying the inhale because that is a question a lot of people might have. Right. And there might be people who are actually scared to, to start smoking cigars because they fear, like, I don't really want to inhale, you know, what is the proper way to smoke? And that's what we're here to help. Correct. With. And, and often the, the, the classic master and your dad is like this, not to throw him under the bus, but he uses the word inhale because it's the way he views it in his head, but what he really means is retrohale. And retrohale is where you take the smoke into your mouth and there's two ways to retrohale. The other way is you take it into your throat and then you exhale through your nose. Now the purpose of this is if you truly want to know how a cigar tastes, our taste buds are designed through the sense of smell. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a combination of both. The nose works with your tongue and your mouth to give you the taste and the flavor. I retrohale in a very unique way. Your dad retrohales in the old school way. So I'm going to explain both. We'll start with the way your dad does it. What Ernesto does is he takes a little bit of smoke into his throat, right about here. He doesn't bring it down into his lungs. And then he exhales through his nose and the smoke comes out through his nose. I'm a little different. The reason I don't do that is because I do smoke a lot of cigars. And if I smoked as many cigars as your dad did, probably over time, 
I would get used to it, mm -hmm. but I don't like the feeling of that leftover burning sensation in my throat when I smoke as many cigars as I do. Mm -hmm. So the way I retrohale is I take the smoke into my mouth, I'll hold it there, I'll inhale through my nose, and then as I exhale through my nose, I, instead of blowing the smoke out my mouth, I push it back into the airstream and it comes out through my nose. The purpose also of retrohale is to understand the strength of the cigar. So a lot of people confuse flavor and body in a cigar. So flavor, a full flavored cigar is a cigar with a lot of flavors. When you're smoking it, it's got everything going on all at once and then some. But the body is really only understood by retrohaling. And the idea is, is how does that affect when you retrohale, how does it affect your nasal passage? Is it easy to retrohale and it's very mild and like it doesn't feel like you're doing anything? You just look down and see smoke pouring out your nose and you're like, oh, well, this must be really mild. You know, or do you cry and start choking up because, which I've done, because it's extremely strong. It's a very full-bodied cigar. So that's part of the other purpose of the retrohale. But as you do it more often, what happens is you'll start to be able to pick up more notes and it opens up the cigar more. The way I tell a lot of people, retrohaling is like adding an ice cube to a great scotch. It helps open up the scotch. This helps open up your palate. So that's the purpose of retrohaling. And as you do more of it, you learn more about the cigar you like and the cigar you're smoking. Now with one cigar, how many times would somebody retrofit? Depending on the size. Let's just say a Robusto size. Well, that depends on the person. So if you take someone like a newer smoker who's just learning to retrohale, they'll probably on a Robusto want to try it two or three times. Okay. And where they want to try it is initially in the first half inch you know, and I believe don't do it immediately because you want to get deeper into the cigar so that all the tobaccos are, are working together in your puff of smoke. Then you probably want to do it at about the halfway point. Then you want to probably do it about the two thirds point. Okay. You know, that would be where I'd recommend. Now, <clears throat> on the flip side, we have a rep that works for us. His name is Chris and he retrohales the entire cigar. You know, so it just depends on the individual and what they like. I mean, there are people that every single time they pull a puff of smoke will retrohale a portion of it because they feel that's a good thing to do and it really helps them understand the cigar. With me, it depends. If I'm really trying to taste a cigar, something your dad wants to bring out or whatever, I'll retrohale more. Mm -hmm. If I don't, if it's a Robusto or a Toro, the two classic sizes, yeah, two to four times during the cigar is what I do. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Well, sounds good, guys. Enjoy your smoke. And as you learn, listen to some of these tips. They're really good. Also, uh, we do have a video of my dad yeah. of how to smoke, and he most likely will be retrohaling there. Yeah. So you can check that one out too. Yep. Thanks. Thank you.